Welcome back to another RCWorks video. Today, welcome to episode three, uh, where we're gonna talk about storage tanks today. So again, we're on the topic of low yielding wells, talking about some of the best options to address a low yielding well. And storage tanks serve a purpose of basically taking the water out of the well when it's available, and then storing it so that you can use it in greater capacities when you need water. Uh, typically, if you're dealing with a low production well, let's say a gallon a minute, so you can actually get 1,440 gallons a day out of a one gallon a minute well, but generally you're not gonna get that all at once. It's gonna be over a 24 hour period. So you need somewhere to store that and uh, that's what we're gonna be talking about today. So let's take a look at some of the most common applications and then we'll discuss some of the pros, some of the cons. Uh, but another great benefit to a water storage system is if you have water quality issues, oftentimes water storage can help to increase your ability to treat the water. So let's say you've got iron in your well. Um, well, having a water storage system is gonna allow the water to oxidize, the iron molecules to precipitate out of the water, and then it's gonna actually lower the iron concentration before it even gets into your home system, which can be a great advantage, and then you just gotta clean it up here and there. Uh, another great thing is if you've got a bacteria issue, you can potentially introduce chlorine into the uh, storage system and uh, have a better retention time and ha overall have a better treatment process. So there's a lot of options when it comes to storage tanks, and they're one of my personal favorites when it comes to addressing low yield issues. Uh, they tend to be a little bit more costly, but I think of it more of an investment as I do think of it as an expense because you're adding value to the home, you're adding value to the property by improving the amount of available water and potentially opening that property up to further expansion by having a greater capacity of water. And, and so it's all great. So let's get to talking about some of the main uh, main types that we see out there and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, so here we are taking a look at some storage tanks. Uh, we've got three main options on the board and really this third one's just kind of a remix of the first one. Uh, so the first one we're gonna talk about here is an underground water storage tank. So this could be anywhere from a 500 to a 3000 or even larger underground storage tank. Um, and one of the main disadvantages that we could talk about with a storage tank process is you're always gonna have to have a second pump unless of course you're able to have the storage tanks up on a hill so if you've got uh, the land working in your favor and maybe you've got a hill up behind your house or a high point on your property or heck you want to put a water tower in uh, then you wouldn't need that second pump and you could operate just on one pump uh, but you got to keep in mind if you're gonna do a storage tank generally speaking you're gonna need a secondary pump the nice thing about it is that um, whereas your traditional well pump had to pressurize. So if you're using a single pump system before and you're thinking about switching, you're actually able to get away with a lesser expensive pump in the well because typically you're gonna have a reduction in horsepower to fill the cistern because it's not under pressure. You're just simply getting the water into the cistern. Um, and then you're gonna have a relatively small pump in most normal circumstances to then take the water out of the cistern and push it into the house. So some of that cost is gonna get split between the two pumps, one being reduced in size and then of course price, and then the secondary pump typically can also be an inexpensive pump and you could probably go a lot cheaper on the cistern pump simply because um, it's a lot more accessible so you, you aren't as prone to um, a high expense on service and things like that uh, as compared to taking a pump out of a well. So um, there are just a lot of different factors to weigh there, but of course, a septic tank, which is what's commonly used for a cistern tank, is just a concrete vault uh, or some plastic water safe uh, type of material is going to be used in these instances. Uh, what I've got shown here, this is just a submersible pump. That's my preferred method is using a submersible pump in the cistern um, because one, when you're putting a well pump in, Everybody that has a well pump knows they generally last a really long time. And then the other advantage is like a jet pump or um, uh, 
an above ground type of pump oftentimes either has to be protected from the elements, which means you're either putting it in your house, in your mechanical room, um, or you've got to build some sort of a structure, which can be kind of an obstruction. If you've got limited space on your property, then a lot of times it's just going to end up in your house. Um, and then you're dealing with the noise of the jet pump, which is not always so fun, especially when you didn't have it before and you're not grown accustomed to it. If you've got a smaller house or an older house, oftentimes the noise of the jet pump can be pretty annoying at times. So submersible pump, increased reliability, it's going to last a long time. They are oftentimes a little more money, but I think it's totally worth it. Um, so that's underground storage tanks in a nutshell. And then of course you got the option of above ground storage tanks, which are great uh, in areas where you don't have to worry about freezing. Now, of course, up here in North Idaho, there's no way that we could use above ground storage tanks because uh, they would freeze solid and break out and, and you'd have to buy a new tank all the time and you'd be out of water and yada, yada, yada. I could go on about that. Um, but it is an option, so let's say you've got a shop or somewhere that's insulated or heated, you could get away with an above ground storage tank, which the advantage is an above ground storage tank is a lot less expensive. Uh, of course, ease of access is also increased uh, yet again. So the dollar per gallon ratio on an above ground tank is much less because you gotta keep in mind excavation is expensive. You've gotta have special, specialized excavation equipment to set a tank in a hole, whereas an above ground tank, you could put it on a pad, you could put it on a um, on some sort of a tamped uh, piece of ground that's level. Uh, so you've got more options with less cost, but again, temperature is a big issue. Um, another option, of course, would be adding pressure tanks. Now this option is a really nice option if it's a relatively small residence, you pl don't plan on doing a ton of expansion, um, and this has been commonly applied in a lot of municipal applications. We can actually show you a quick graphic of some work that we've done with a tremendous amount of pressure tanks in, uh, in a particular installation. So. Okay, so back to pressure tanks and why they're a good choice. Uh, they're a good choice because you can still rely on your primary or original pump that you've got right now. Uh, and of course that's nice because you're not having to worry about two separate pumps. You're gonna end up in the long run paying a little bit less for electricity, but oftentimes um, the cost of the second pump in this first option here is not extreme in terms of energy usage anyways, so don't really weigh that one heavily. Um, but pressure tanks are nice, so on your standard, most common pressure tank is an 81 gallon tank. So that would have about 20, 25, depending on what pressure you're operating at, gallons of drawdown. So you could essentially double that with every pressure tank, or you could not double that, but you could add that much capacity to your system with every pressure tank that you add. So a normal person uses roughly 80 gallons of water per day, and I would say 20, maybe 15% of that is used in most situations, not at home, so you're out and about, what have you. So let's just say maybe 60 gallons per day per person. Um, and if you've got even a halfway decent producing well, adding two or three uh, pressure tanks to your system is gonna more than compensate for your everyday water usage. Now, of course, you're not gonna be able to do a lot of irrigation. Uh, you're not gonna be able to do, I mean, unless you're strategic about it. Um, so you're gonna be somewhat limited with the pressure tank option, but it's a, a low, very, very, very low maintenance, very low installation cost. You've basically just got the cost of the pressure tanks. Um, if you use a good quality pressure tank, which is well worth it, we prefer the Wellex Troll tanks, which we do sell. Um, because they tend to last anywhere from 10 to 20 years. Uh, so that's a pretty good investment, especially in the long term. So you can add you know, essentially 20 gallons roughly of capacity to your system for every, let's say, five, $600 spent. Um, and if you're dealing with relatively small scale, it makes a lot of sense. But the big thing there again is you gotta have the room. So if you've got this in like a utility closet or something in your house, you may not have the total capacity to add three or four tanks to meet your particular family's expected usage. So you've got to weigh the options um, and figure out what's going to be best for you. 
Uh, and then moving on, so um, number three, we've just got, like I said, this is kind of a remix of our first option. There is always the option to add a small storage tank in your basement. Now this could be 30 gallons, this could be 60 gallons, this could be 300 gallons. Um, you've got a lot of options depending on what space you've got available. You could get a square tank, a cylindrical tank. They make a ridiculous amount of different shapes and sizes when it comes to like a poly tank. Um, one risk that you run with uh, indoor water storage is if the tank ever became damaged, you could have a pretty significant water problem in your basement. Um, and then the other common thing with uh, these types of indoor tanks is you're generally stuck with like a jet pump, so an immersible pump, not something that's gonna be submerged in the tank. Uh, though, depending on what tank type you get, you would have an option to put a pump in it, uh, which would help with the sound issue, especially if you're dealing with that. And of course, you're gonna get the added reliability I mentioned before. Um, so lots of options when it comes to low yielding wells. So we would definitely like to hear if you have any questions, have any unique installation situations. Hopefully this sheds some light on some of the options that you have when it comes to low yielding wells and getting much better capacity out of the well, as well as improving the value of the property altogether. So thanks for joining us today. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more great content. We'll catch you next time.